Thank you. This might be kind of like a palate cleanser in between longer things. And also, I'm so happy I'm not going after DS-106 because no, everyone knows they're not at all entertaining. <laughs> that wouldn't be hard to follow at all. So. Um, okay, so yes. I'm here today to talk to you about um, a communication tool that um, I developed called OER Exchange. And it is described as classified ads for open educational resources. Topic near and dear to all of our hearts, of course. I'm just a little bit curious to know who's in the room. Um, educators, raise hands, please. Okay, mostly educators. Yay, great, you're my target audience. Uh, researchers? And it's all the same people, which I love. It's exactly, exactly as it should be. Um, okay. So yeah, this, uh, this just repeats what I said in my abstract. I have been interacting with people focused in open education for a few years. I come to it from studying online education generally. And something I noticed was that, you know, sometimes we forget that the term OER itself is, is lingo and, and uh, even, even open educational resources is lingo and start chatting with people about their work and they don't really know what you're talking about. If you say, oh, do you, you know, do you use open resources in your classroom and sort of get a blank look and then you might start listing things which actually aren't really open because those are the ones that they know about anyway. And they say, oh yes, of course, yes, yes, yes. I, I, I actually am very interested in using materials like that, but I just, I, I don't know where to find them. And I had that exchange so many times and I hear about, I hear about people saying it um, all the time. And that's across different sectors and across um, you know, different countries. Um, I heard it at the, a K-12 conference in the States last year, which actually had an OER track, but you know, the issue of of um, where do I find OER was coming up over and over. And we all know about you know, the repositories that are, that are very high quality, um, involve peer review. Um, there's a lot of sharing. And of course, yes, with, with regard to the peer review issue, the other question is how do I know if it's any good? <laughs> it's the other OER question. So uh, I got to thinking about this and I was thinking where do people talk about OER, where do we discuss it with each other? And um, I did a little bit of brainstorming and I came up with a bunch of categories and I administered a survey and I showed the results of the survey before, but now I'm showing them in a new colorful format. Oh, I just gained a tag that didn't, that's, oh, that's, that's incredibly awkward because my three, my three most interesting numbers just disappeared from the slide. <laughs> And they were on the slide when I was sitting over Press there. Press the button again in case uh, it's, uh, oh, sorry. Wow, that's really strange. Well, I'll, I'll, I can just make them up in that case. That's great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what, what my survey showed was that uh, the places where we talk about OER with each other, with other people in the field, or you know, uh, when we're looking for information about it, or when we're specifically sharing information about it, I believe the number one category was conferences and it's, it's well over 20% of us responded, that's how we do it. Um, next up was face-to-face -face meetings. Um, so with people we see uh, on a regular, semi-regular basis. And the third category was um, personal emails. And all three of those, we all answer 20% uh, frequency. Whereas the rest of them going around, I don't know if you can read it, but going around Twitter, private mailing lists, assorted websites, blog posts, public mailing lists, online conferences, webinars, journals, even Facebook, this, this it drops immediately to 8% <laughs> and goes down to 4 So this is some, it's, it's almost negligible. And these, these are the places that we're, that we're sharing information about OER, which, you know, it shows kind of a, a very distributed breadcrumb trail for, for users trying to understand where do I begin, where do I start to find OER, how do I understand their quality and how do I use them in my classroom? And I, I think of this as sort of the OER footprint that we're creating for the rest of the world. You know, who, people outside of this conference who are interested in OER, they come to it, they start looking for it, what is it? They read the um, Wikipedia definition um, and uh, they see all these resources. And I started wandering around saying, why doesn't someone just build a Craigslist for OER? For OER? And I know not everyone uh, outside of the US uses Craigslist, so briefly, 
uh, I, I have a slide now explaining what it is, in case you've never seen it. It's not very pretty. It's, it's, it's very, very functional. It's very low bandwidth. Um, it's a way that it's, pre it's entirely ubiquitous in large American cities. It's a way that people buy and sell things primarily or talk about stuff. It's like single-use posts. You, po you, just, you just say, I'm looking for a car. I, I have a car to sell. Uh, it's used for dating, it's used for hiring people, it's very much used for renting apartments. Very, very simple way of discussing things, looking for things, helping people find things. And it's, well, I say free and open, and I, I'm, I'm not going to... I'm not going to comment. It's not, you know, it's not, this is not the kind of com content that is openly licensed, but it's open for everyone to use. So, so I built one. I found this really talented programmer who said, oh, well, actually, there's a uh, open source version of Craigslist if you want, and I'll, I'll make one for you. And so I did, and, 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 and here it is, and I have little cards and you can, you can take them if you know people who you think might be interested in this platform. Um, it's in beta right now, and um, I, was lucky enough to, I was lucky enough to be able to beta test it with um, users at the OER Research Hub, some of whom are here. Thank you, guys. They gave me a lot of valuable feedback, which has, I think, at this point been um, mostly uh, in integrated. Uh, got some feed from Connections uh, as well, Dan Williamson, and also from Sailor Foundation. One of the issues was getting some data into it so that people coming to the site have a sense of what it's for. But so yeah, briefly, it has an RSS feed, and I'm it's currently scraping other RSS feeds. That's something that we're doing. With some manual categor categorization, but low bandwidth because in other countries, this this you know, and I, I was in Nicaragua not long ago. But I have a friend who was just in Vietnam, and we go to these places, and 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 really, we, there are bandwidth issues there. Like it's very hard to load websites like Facebook, you know? So having um, very uh, low bandwidth um, solutions like this, I think is still much more useful in some other countries than, than people tend to remember in the Western, Western world. And so this is just sort of a close up in case you've never seen it before. You, it's, it's that simple, it's just, you know, you post, a, you post a listing, it goes into a category. Subject categories on the left, physics, uh, obstetrics, geography. I sort of started with the UNESCO category, subject categories and pared them down and then pared them down more. And this is, this is dynamic. You know, I can, keep, I can keep changing these based on, on everyone's feedback. And I would love feedback. Um, and then on, on the right side, I sort of set up a section more for meta discussion. So things like uh, jobs in the OER field, uh, course development, if people wanted to post something about course development resources that they like to share, they're looking for a certain type of resources. Uh, collaborations, people want to work on things together, want to post information about conferences, etc. Um, so a couple ideas for, I've had some people say, well, I don't understand exactly what I would do with this, so this, this is my little brainstorm for, for you know, what someone might be looking for, like a specific level resource if they haven't actually been able to find it on one of the mainstream sites. But maybe, you know, if they go into a community where people are discussing these things, they can ask specifically about content resources. They can share things that they might not otherwise be, you know, finding outlets for sharing, like check out this cool biology video I made with my grade eight students, that kind of thing, which I think happens sort of on a personal basis where, Things are extremely informal. Um, publicizing workshops, um, uh, res research studies, uh, looking for specific language languages. This programmer has actually built this so that it can be scaled into different languages quite easily. Right now, it defaults to English, but it's like architected to be in different languages if if it were ever that successful. And that's kind of it. Um, uh, I, I think I have like a feedback slide and a thank you slide both. So uh, <laughs> that's the URL. And I actually managed to get a four letter URL. I, don't, I didn't know that was still possible. Um, a four letter domain name. You can actually just use oerx.org and it takes you to OER Exchange. Um, whoever owns oerx.com is not keen to part with it, but <laughs> I'm okay with that. They bought it in 2002. They can't possibly have any idea what it is. Um, I, I, I would really appreciate help from people just 
posting some content in it to sort of drive what it is and what it could potentially be because when you go to it now it's, it's a bit empty. Um, we did sort of upload some spreadsheets of data um, but it's, you know, it's not real people posting real stuff. It's sort of just me finding interesting links and a couple other people doing the same thing. Um, and I would really appreciate sharing, you know, if you know people, especially in developing worlds, who have ac difficulty accessing or locating um, developing world countries, I should say. Developing world is a whole different issue. Pr haven't actually architected this for other worlds yet. Uh, that's a joke. <laughs> Um, I, I would just really appreciate a lot of feedback going forward. And that's my thank you slide. So, thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, it looks really, really interesting. And I think I'll, I'll definitely be adding stuff to this because I think, like you said, there's, there's a real lack of aggregation, OER aggregation. Having been involved in trying to aggregate OER myself uh, and the sort of issues of, one, it's really hard to get OER in the first place and then when you get to a lot of OER in one space, the managing the metadata, managing that content is quite tricky. I know there's, there's not a lot in here at the moment. So I'm just, uh, the question is basically, how are you going to handle, which potentially it could be, quite a huge repository of content, and handle the metadata on that? Because it, I, I see that as a really huge challenge in terms of, um, yeah, sort of making it make sense. Although the way that this is done is, is really nice, the way it's laid out on the page in terms of you go where you want to go, all those just at a first glance, some of the categories, I'm thinking I wouldn't, I wouldn't phrase it that way. I wouldn't put my content in that arena or there's a missing place for this. Yeah, yeah. so I think, yeah, there are two issues there. One is this is definitely not supposed to be another OER repository because there are so many and they're so good and they're full of metadata and they're interoperable. <laughs> and that, so I viewed this more as a place where people can talk about those those existing OER uh, repositories say something like, well, I like to use OER Commons because and someone else might say, the thing I don't like about OER Commons is, and someone could say, well, actually, ISKME was kind enough to create a landing page for my institution, and this is what it looks like. Oh, what was your experience working with ISKME? And it's so you, your responses can, you can respond personally or you can post your responses. It's not, it's not exactly a forum, which is kind of a shame, but I should stress that it is supposed to be more of a communication tool than a repository itself. Yeah. And, then, yeah. and then as for the, the different categories, I know exactly what you mean. It's been so hard to figure out what categories to use. And it's really easy for me to add new ones. Um, I didn't open it up to anyone to add categories, but if people send me ideas for Here's a category you should use, and I see it displaces that one. Perhaps you could just join the two together. <laughs> Ideas like that. I'm really keen to hone this to make it more useful to other people. Yeah, t just to clarify, yeah, I, I didn't see this as a repository. I, I, I think what I was trying to say was, yeah, if you if you put a, a pointer to a thousand resources, for instance. Yeah. But if you if you get a thousand of those pointing to a thousand resources or a hundred resources, you know, yeah. aggregating that, I, I, just that in itself, just a pointer, is, is, is yeah. Quite I, well, I think like part of the idea for me was that I kept seeing the same I kept seeing the same issues and links cycling and cycling and cycling through the OER mailing list that people do use to communicate with each other. And I, real, and I realized that this stuff doesn't really need to be formalized any place. It does just keep cycling and cycling and cycling. So, you know, content, like there, it has a search box. So if you're looking for a specific thing, you can find it by, by keyword. Uh, otherwise, things just come to the top by date. Um, and so it's not really meant to, I, I'm not really addressing the issue of like how to archive this information over time because it's always shifting, it's always increasing and and that, yeah, I hope that, hope that answers your question. Thank you.